So welcome back everybody. As you can see, we have had a pretty major upgrade here on the place. If y'all have watched the channel for any length of time, you have seen me mowing with my old mower, which was a a very light duty mower it worked really well but i just hit one too many stumps with it and it finally cracked the um uh, the gearbox plate the gearbox mount plate right there so uh it, it it's it's finished unfortunately so we had to get a new one and i went with this machine right here it's a very heavy duty machine and we'll get into the details of it in a minute but right now let's get it let's get it put together and uh put on the tractor I think that's looking pretty good of course <laughs> the first thing i did when i when i was putting it together was uh or when i got this wheel off rather was drop this wheel in the dirt and this nice greased post right here is just a dirty mess now so we gotta fix that problem So there are several really great advantages of this machine over my old machine and this is probably the primary one right here uh, this is of course I, a lot of y'all obviously know about this but this is a uh, this is a slip clutch and this works both to protect uh, the mower and the tractor and my last machine had just a shear pin on it and I'll show y'all I'll show y'all that in just a second just to show all what the alternative is but basically how this works is you've got a solid connection right here uh, straight to the drive shaft or straight to the PTO on the tractor and then right here you've got another metal plate which is uh, has has these uh, springs right here holding tension pulling this plate onto this solid shaft now sandwiched between those two you've got two uh, pressure plates just like a clutch on a vehicle and let me give you all a closer look and I'll show you there we go here's a good view from the other side the lighting is really bad out here today uh, but if you see right there you've got that split right there that seam and that's two pressure plates that are very very tight against one another and basically what happens is if you hit a stump or a mound of sand or a rock or uh, anything like that that would cause this machine to jar very heavily what happens is those two pressure plates just slip on one another and that absorbs that uh, well that takes care of all that extra energy so the energy doesn't um, you know, get resolved in your machine here uh, or the tractor so here's the alternative here this is a shear pin setup and shear pins work really well they're just a little less convenient and uh, prone to operator error because people have a tendency to put too hard of bolts in these things but you've got the gearbox you've got the PTO shaft that goes to the tractor so you've got the same exact concept if you hit something that produces a shock this pin will just break and resolve that shock and it's a little more inconvenient because you have to stop and you got to pull your pieces out and uh, 
take, it takes a little bit of extra time to resolve, but it produces the same uh, produces the same result. Now, a lot of times, what people have the tendency to do is put bolts in here that are much that are much too hard, and that creates problems too because then that bolt won't shear. And I really can't figure out why or uh, what kind of bolt this is. I'm used to the uh, to the notches on the outsides of these bolts to tell what the grade is, but that's got that right there on the bottom. I don't know if that's a grading system as well because this was the last bolt that I put on it right here that did break and there's nothing else on there but that's got this down here I'm not really sure but I do know that I hit a lot of things with this bolt and it never broke so I'm kind of suspicious of what kind of bolt that is but I've got a, a shear pin here that broke and I'll show you all it so this is a shear pin that did exactly what it was supposed to do. You've got this end, you've got the uh, the head right there, and then you've got the middle, and it just broke when it hit something and um, resolved that shock that would have damaged the tractor or the uh, uh, or the machine. If you look right here, and again the lighting out here is pretty bad, you can see the crack on the the uh, gearbox mount plate right here. Now, I really can't uh, complain about this mower because, man, it has been through a lot and it is really old and it's been a really good machine, but unfortunately it's just time to lay it to rest. All right, so before we really put this thing through its paces, we want to make absolutely sure that it came with gearbox oil from the factory. And it did. Well, we're good there. So let's get this squeaky grease gun out here and uh, grease this thing real good before we put it through its paces. And I kind of wanted to tell you all why I decided to go with this particular machine. This is a this is a J Bar brand machine. Uh, this is made in Georgia, in North Georgia, and uh, it, it is a pretty heavy duty machine. I've been pretty impressed with it so far except for this grease fitting that's in a really inconvenient location. Um, but I've been really impressed with it so far. Man, I can't even get to that grease fitting. I'm going to have to turn it. Hang on just a second. I forgot about this one up here too. There we go. Uh, so anyway, this is a J Bar brand. It's made in North Georgia. They've got a factory up there. And uh, this was <laughs> just about literally the cheapest machine that I could find. And I don't really mean that in a disparaging way because I shopped a lot. I did a lot of shopping before I'd finally decided on this machine. And the reason that I went with this machine is yeah, price was definitely a factor. But uh, this is a really heavy duty machine. I was just totally impressed. Squeak, squeak, squeak. I was totally impressed with the specifications on this thing. The deck is seven gauge steel, which amounts to about three sixteenths of an inch, which is uh, pretty heavy duty. Uh, that's a pretty heavy duty deck. Um, the uh, gearbox mount plate is about a quarter of an inch. And that is really the part. Ugh. That is really the part that takes the most abuse because if you're going along and you hit a stump or something like that, uh, you're instantly going to have a big jarring motion, a shock uh, to the machine. And uh, really the flex, the torque is all going to be centered on that, uh, that plate right there, that gearbox mount plate. So I was very impressed when I saw uh, how thick that gearbox plant, uh, mount plate was. So this grease fitting here on this rear wheel is just a straight grease fitting. You can see right there. And that doesn't allow me to get my, um, what is that thing called, that quick coupler on my grease gun in there because it's just too long. So what I'm gonna do is find a, find one that'll work with a 90 degree angle and replace it and should solve that problem. That might be it right there. So the gearbox itself is actually a 75 horsepower gearbox 
and uh, which should be you know more than sufficient for this tractor it's a 45 47 or so horsepower tractor uh, 75 horsepower gearbox and a slip clutch which i thought was really good uh, the slip clutch is going to save a lot of time and a lot of the damage most likely to the machine because i'm i'm not very easy on <laughs> i'm not very easy on these mowers uh, so i only paid like 1150 dollars for this machine which is really really cheap as far as rotary mowers go so if the deck is so thick and everything is so heavy duty, uh, where do they cut costs? Let's kind of look and see where they cut cost on this thing. So as far as where they cut costs on this machine, uh, you can see here, this is a very, very cheap, thin paint job on it. Uh, it's got runs in it in places, uh, but I'm not worried about the paint. It's gonna get scratched up anyway. That's not something I'm complaining about. Uh, we can also see that some of these components are foreign components. This rear wheel, uh, it's got a stamp on it somewhere that says it's made in India. Uh, the gearbox, I'm certain it's not a U.S. made gearbox. Uh, and the steel, probably not U.S. steel either. I mean, for $1,150, uh, that's you really can't expect a whole lot of US components on it. Uh, it's also fairly crudely put together We can see that they reinforced this with a piece of angle iron and it's the same on this other side and the same on the front where it mounts to the tractor to the uh, the uh, top hitch on the tractor and it's just a very crudely put together machine made out of very heavy duty components but kind of crudely put together fit and finish isn't phenomenal on it but I didn't buy it for the fit and finished I bought it fit, fit and finish I bought it for I uh, bought it for the thickness of the steel it also doesn't have uh, these skids right here that you can unbolt and put new ones on which is kind of a disadvantage but these are very very thick so I'm not too concerned about that also, we can see this cross member on the front here. It's kind of difficult to see now since it's lifted up off of the ground, but it's got a little bow in it, which I don't think is going to affect functionality in the least, but still you can just kind of tell that's a fit and finish issue on this machine. But like I said, I did not buy it for the fit and finish. I bought it for the thick components and only time will tell how well it's going to hold up. So let's go ahead and put it through its paces and see what it'll do.
All right, so it'll cut grass, big deal, right? Let's see what it does against actual brush. This is a really overgrown area of our land right here. It includes uh, China berry trees such as this one, uh, probably about an inch at the biggest at the base right here on some of these. So let's go ahead and try this and uh, see how it does against this junk. Well guys, I'll have to say I'm just totally, totally impressed with that machine. Uh, here's that privet hedge that we knocked down a few minutes ago. And, uh, and you can see it does a great job just plowing it right over and grinding it up. Let's look at some of this china berry. So here's some of that china berry. There was china berry all out here and it just kind of comes out by the roots it seems. I think that's how it spreads. Kind of like a, kind of like Medusa. You know, you cut off one and it sprouts about five other heads, kind of like a, uh, uh, kind of like a sweet gum, but look it didn't It didn't have any trouble whatsoever knocking this stuff down And grinding it right up <laughs> that thing got hung up up under it at one point and I was stomping the clutch like I was on the Ford 3 <laughs> Ford 3000 <laughs> There's still a lot to do out here, but just kind of wanted to give you all a give you all an example so first impressions on this thing, I am totally impressed with it. I am totally impressed. It is very well balanced. You know, it's not perfect because I don't think there are any rotary mowers that are actually perfect, but it is it is very, very close. It is very, very close to perfect. It's well balanced. Um, it is, you know, I can't think of anything I can complain about it. You know, the fit and finish, it's kind of crude, but it's made out of really thick metal and it does the job that it was designed to do so i'm happy with it i'm very happy with it as far as longevity goes we'll just we'll just have to see this right here is probably one of the best things about it you know i had a lot of people saying on my videos on my last rotary mower 
that man you need to cover up that pto shaft and yeah i agreed with that uh so now we've got a covered pto shaft so we've got another element of safety right there but anyhow thought i'd give you all my first impressions this one right here i'm kind of i'm not going to attempt this one with this mower that's a that's a good two and a half or three inch three inch uh, tree right there there's no use no need in tearing it up this one right here is probably one and a half inches i think it would get that one without any trouble but i think that's just way too much right there but anyhow i thought i'd share that with y'all thanks for watching i will see y'all next time